Machere and other fish species are related to pelagic conditions in uh, the entire Lake Victoria. And indeed, it is one of the species that are now not even coming to your food, uh, food market. And if you look at your food market, these people have changed the names of fish every now and then. And uh, because either they don't want you to eat it or to know it. Thank you. Thank you very much, JB. I think you need a piece of paper. I'll just allow three questions in a row and you give very brief answers because of time. I think I saw Dr. Mucci's. Uh, Dr. Mucci, please. Thank you, Chair. All right, thank you. Uh, I'm humbled by the the level of uh, research you have done over many decades, and um, especially within Nyando, where there are threats to and threats also from the wetland. And I wanted to ask, um, because you have engaged so much on research in that particular area, what are direct benefits that the community has benefited from your output over that time? And secondly, which, which research gaps still exist after you've done all this research for this time that are available for other researchers? Thank you. Yes, uh, Professor Peter Kisinho. Thank you very much, JB, for that presentation. It is quite enlightening. Uh, my question is uh, about, um, of course, we know the wetlands, the climate change is here with us. What are some of the mitigation measures to protect the wetlands ecosystems? Then I have uh, Professor Tenga. Professor Wilson Otenga. The last round of questions in terms of the first set, Dr. Botiano. Uh, thank you very much, Prof, for that presentation. Uh, it's quite eye-opening. I did not know that uh, there's so much benefits that uh, the wetlands are that productive. Uh, from a social scientist perspective, my question is, from time to time, we see people suffering out of uh, the ecosystem. We see people suffering during, due to floods in the wetlands. Yet there are all these benefits. How can the wetlands be harnessed so that it, it is not only a source of suffering to some people, but it also benefits everybody within that environment. We've heard of cries of Sericalis idea. How can this uh, be sorted? Thank you. Your time to respond to those questions very briefly, yeah. and then there would only be one round of more questions, and then we could close it. It can be conserved and protected. Not wetlands. wetlands are big ecosystems. You can't take it and put it in your pocket. Right? And, uh, and so, uh, because of that, we have to work towards its benefit. Now, it happens that uh, issues of wetlands are wide, especially issues like Nando wetland. It has many benefits. In fact, if you look at that book, you find I have listed 
wrote less than 10 benefits that people derive from wetland. That's why I asked this uh, young man who had to stand up for having uh, dressed in kind of soup produced from land wetland. I'm sure most of you are not just looking for food. But what level of income? And land wetland has a lot of income that can actually be protected and used. Papyrus alone is of benefit, benefit to a lot of people. If you remember, papyrus is a plant named in Egypt for making paper. So you have woodland plants like papyrus. You don't have to cut trees and so on and so forth. The climate change issue, I did mention that, uh, or jokingly, that uh, comparatively, it is more comfortable to work and stay in wetlands than working and staying in dry lands, right? And so arising from that then, there are many reasons why wetlands are valuable in mitigating and therefore promoting their existence in mitigating adverse effects of climate change. And I could list, for example, we normally say that uh, wetlands, we normally say that uh, Climate change leads to flooding, droughts, and so on. But the wetlands filter the flood water and several other things that are disadvantageous to its ecosystem and to the local and indigenous people. Then you have the research gaps. There are many research gaps. Oh, you never finish research. The day you finish your research, it is only you who has finished. Always we work to discover new research gaps and how to solve problems creating. You know, research is a job. It also creates problems which you must solve. And we have a lot of gaps in the wetland research activities. Much as we say that we have also looked at major challenges that make people not participate in proper conservation of these wetlands. We have also looked at why is it that Kenya government, for example, does not have a clear policy on conservation of wetlands. Why the Uganda government have a clear policy, and last year, the president there declared wetlands mobile zone. If you plant rice there, they will remove it. And that is in the policy. I think what we should have asked is, where are we going wrong as an, institu as a, an institution, as a community living around wetlands? or as a government, and as an international community. Direct benefits? I think I mentioned, uh, is responded to that. And, uh, Prof, before you just ask any question, allow me, when we were recognizing our visitors, uh, I apologize, we forgot to recognize our OCS, Kitere, Police Station, Chief, uh, Chief Inspector Samuel Onyango. I thank you so much. You have been very close to us. You have seen the best and the worst of Rungu University when there is strike <laughs> we appreciate 
you being with us and what you have done to this institution. Professor Guyo, and then two more, then, uh, yes, Nyakiti, and uh, those will be the only ones. I don't see another hand. Ah, there is a third hand. Oh, and a fourth hand. Professor Aguyo, ask your question very brief so that others can also get opportunity. And then Nyakiti, then uh, our council member David, and then the chair of council. Thank you very much. I come from one part where there's also wetland. And over the years, we have been getting out at four and getting catfish. At the last and missed the catfish. Do you have catfish on that wetland part? Uh, thank you so much, Prof, for giving us a very balanced um, uh, presentation on the status of uh, the Nyando ecosystem. Uh, part of my question would be related to some that you've taken on. The first one would be to reclaim or not to reclaim. Have your studies done some analysis to check on the benefits we might get when we reclaim or we don't reclaim? I have this uh, based on what I see happening right now in uh, Indonesia, where they've reclaimed some portions of the tropical forest there for cultivation of palm oil. And if you look at the kind of prices we are paying for cooking oil right now, I suspect they could be laughing all the way to the bank. Might be there's something better from that. Now, secondly, you mentioned that um, the Nyando Basin, apparently whatever circles that we're having of flood, uh, floods and droughts apparently is uh, coming from upstream. Might there be some way of mitigating all these human sufferings that we see? Perhaps maybe if a dam were to be built somewhere upstream to check on these kind of levels of water. Thank you very much, uh, Professor K.O. Ward, for your presentation. I think that um, the issue of uh, wetlands has come from very far, because I remember that um, in early 80s, we were talking about reclamation, and uh, I know you were in Lake Basin. I was also in Lake Basin, and there was a time when we were seriously thinking of continuing to reclaim the Yala, Yala, Yala Swamp, and uh, there are many uh, studies which have been done, but that's not my question. My question is that um, I didn't hear, or what is the, the effect of hyacinth in the ecosystem of Nyando? Okay, okay. mine is a very straightforward question. I know in the early 50s, the rice we got from wetlands was very, very sweet. And I've been trying to find information. What is it in the wetland soil that gives different types of fruits and even uh, cereals a special taste? And apart from that, once you lose wetlands, is there a way of reversing The final question is from uh, our... Uh, thank you so much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and our Professor JB, uh, for such a wonderful presentation. You have uh, indeed enlightened our views concerning the lake basin. We also happen to get to come from the same area. We are challenged. Uh, <clears throat> the question that I have is uh, uh, is from the threats of Nyanda Westlands. I've seen several threats that you've highlighted. And uh, there is one that I thought you could have, but I've not seen it quite clearly. We have uh, the problem of uh, uh, female anopheles mosquitoes that has, that has uh, 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 
caused malaria disease to many of the people living around the uh, the wetland uh, uh, the wetland side and uh, most of these people who are young children most uh, often succumb to this disease from your research have you come up with a possible way of dealing with this pest so that we save the lives of our people because the possible ways of controlling uh, the mosquitoes and malaria that we have at the moment have failed to sufficiently deal with the problem. That is to mention nets and, uh, and pesticides. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> what you are seeing in your home are small catfish. What you are not seeing are when they are grown up, because then you have, your people have eaten all of them. Imagine somebody eating your children. Would you see a big person like a Professor here surviving that kind of harsh conditions? So what is uh, the, the catfish now? are largely being used, harvested and used to trap the Nile patch, the small ones, the, the ones that are this size. So there is no way they are going to grow to adults, and therefore there is no way you are going to eat the, that beautiful big catfish. At Lake Basin, we started a catfish aquaculture. Actually, that was my initiative because already we had a lot of problems of people harvesting small fish around the swamps in the river and areas to be able to be used for other purposes, not for food. And today, you can see what is in the lake and even the fringing areas of um, of Nana wetland. A lot of cage culture. A lot of aquaculture. For aquaculture and cage culture and also for other purposes in the lake the most common source of food is catfish, the small ones. And even then, there is poor fishing practices. Today, many of you people, like uh, the young man complaining about malaria, you have been given mosquito nets and you use the mosquito nets to trap fish. And then you come here and ask me, is there any solution? <laughs> okay, I hope I have answered your question too. The, the, other, the other part of it is entomological. <clears throat> then, uh, of course, um, to reclaim or not to reclaim. The point is don't reclaim natural wetlands that have been created by God. Go to your Bible and obey what they are saying. Use, protect, but don't over exploit. Don't reclaim and therefore don't damage. I hope that is uh, clear. Mitigating what? Water hyacinth, yes, water hyacinth. I was in the middle of water hyacinth uh, debate and activities when the plant was introduced in Lake Victoria. Just like um, uh, Mr. <coughs>
inspired the Fatima to uh, fumigate your uh, live, loved one before burying. But when it rains 25 years from now, you will have died. What happens will germinate? Yala swamp. I think that's the same thing. Do you agree? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like you for this thing. I was also there when the rice was very nice. But it has nothing to do with the with the wetland rice. It has to do with plant breeding. When you are breeding, plant breeders who are here, like uh, Professor Goyo, forget the quality of taste. They go to the quality of high yield. And taste and high yield are opposite partners. They sleep in the wrong side of each other. So you lose one factor and gain another one. Most of the rice varieties that you, you used to see and I used to see in 50s were local rice varieties. Bread kept and used locally. Today's rice variety are from either WARDA, West African Rice Research Development uh, Organization, I think it has a new name, and EVI, International Rice Research Institution. The Kenyan Research Institution has no rice to produce, but to copy, the, the, we are just copycats. Any variety that comes up, we try it and quickly send it to farmers. That is how we have lost our nice rice. And indeed, that is how we have lost our, our nice maize and sorghum. And you could go on and on. Then, uh, Anopheles, let me just tell you, uh, you know, mosquitoes transmit malaria, but they don't manufacture malaria. The animals that uh, manufacture malaria are people. So, <laughs> don't blame Anopheles. Any young Anopheles mosquito that is, is born has no malaria germs in it. When it bites you, the man from Lake Victoria with a lot of mosquito germs, of course you give it uh, some malaria germs. And if you survive, you remain with the others to Sambasa. So, uh, and then especially when you don't do good practices like using mosquito nets to harvest fish, then you have nowhere, you have nowhere to hide. Thank you. Uh, okay, sorry, uh, Prof. Who, to have uh, we had some presents for Professor uh, Professor JV. 
Professor JB, we know you've been standing for a long time and you're tired. Uh, yes, uh, Prof, sorry, we, we know you are tired, but uh, we had some uh, something for you on this occasion, a small gift, a gift for Mama, and there's also a gift from the school for trailblazing this uh, activity. And I was going to ask the, the Chair of Council to give you the gift from, uh, to give you the gift, and a member of uh, council, Catherine, if you could uh, give the gift to Mama, and the Professor Senior to give the gift from the school to uh, uh, Professor JB. Uh, so, Prof, if you could just go up front, uh, and Mama, I know it's been a, a long day. You've been standing a long time for a long time. We are sorry. The, the space is rather squeezed. Eh? Uh, the place is rather squeezed. We are sorry. We are we are sorry about that. Professor for trailblazing the inaugural, inaugural lecture and uh, setting an example and uh, research you have done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair, for that support. Catherine, if Catherine around. Catherine, if you could, uh, uh, Mama, Tunashukuru Sana. Kwa sababu uli, ulimpatia Professor Nafazi kufanya hii kazi ya research na kuandika. Numuambia kaa hapa uchunge ngombe. Tumeshukuru sana. Please, uh, 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 Catherine, thank you very much. And uh, Peter Kisinyo, uh, Peter Kisinyo, the Dean, Sanres, Again, they are grateful that you have set the you have set the pace, and they want to thank you. In hope that sooner than later they will get a, a gift such as we are getting today. Thank you very much, Professor uh, Peter Senior. Please. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The tradition is uh, ladies can open the gifts as they are given. Gentlemen do not open their gifts when they are given. They just open it. So please, Prof, don't open your gift here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I think now we can move on to the next session. Thank you very much. We can move on to the next session. In the next session uh, uh, is a vote of thanks by uh,
for allowing us to have this inaugural lecture and also for facilitating for this inaugural lecture to take place. A lot of input has gone in, a lot of funding and financial support. We sincerely thank you for providing the finances that have made this day successful. We also thank you for being present in this uh, lecture. You, you, you have inspired us, those, who are, all those of us who are coming behind, that indeed you are together with us in all the activities that are taking place in this university. And we are so grateful. We are really humbled by your presence in this place. Thank you so much. I want to thank uh, Professor JB for this kind of work that you have been undertaking. I know it has taken you so many years and so much resources, but you've done it for the good of communities, for the good of the academia, and for the good of this country, as well as internationally. We just want to say thank you so much for producing knowledge and also for coming up with evidence that will be useful for our policy makers as well as our practitioners even to be able to change the life of our people. We thank you the family of Professor, the wife for allowing him to do all this work and the rest of the family for the, the support that you have provided him all along and also for attending to this inaugural lecture, we really thank you. To the professors who are present, thank you for every support you have provided to the professor, to the section of research and to the university as a whole, so that this great occasion will be able to take place. I also want to take uh, this opportunity to thank all the deans, all the head of departments, and all the members of academic staff, as well as all the other staff for being here and for every support that you have accorded, Professor. I know sometimes it's never easy to do something alone. We all need support from other people. And you have been useful in provi providing this kind of support. Thank you so much. And I pray that you continue to support others. Thank you, Prof, for being a mentor. You have continually mentored us. And some of us are growing because of him. Thank you so much, Professor. And all the other guests that I've not mentioned, Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for being here, our security. Thank you so much for being with us and for making us safe in this place. Otherwise, I again thank God for granting us this official occasion. And I want to say that may God bless all of us, even in this place, for this occasion. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Florence, uh, for, uh, for, for that vote of thanks, and also for those who gave us the water and those who gave us the food that we ate. Uh, and those of us who have not eaten, those will give us the food that we want to eat. Um, again, because of time, uh, I think I will uh, ask uh, Dr. Reverend, uh, Reverend Dr. Omolo, uh, or do we have the, the national anthem? Do we? Uh, Dr. Reverend uh, uh, Molo, please uh, lead us in the closing prayer. Whether we are seated or standing, it will be up to how you order us. Kindly, let's stand and thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your presence with us this day. As we celebrate your servant, Professor Joash Barakokeo Uwar, who has presented to us an inspiring inaugural lecture on the Nyando wet wetlands of Lake Victoria Basin. We pray that our learning and conversation of this day do not die, but instead continue to ruminate within us and bear fruits in our communities in our university, in our nation, and beyond. And Lord, now we pray that you bless us as we depart to our various abodes in preparation for the celebration of Easter that culminated in the death and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, that has brought us free gift of salvation. 
And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. And the blessings of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. I uh, counsel uh, no. Paparazzi, where do we have this photo session so that we can uh, release? And let's go uh, uh, honor your most prominent son, the firstborn in, of the uh, events.